What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Birthdays The Beginning where we're going to be doing some orogeny today which is much less erotic than it sounds like but we're going to be building mountains. Uh, that's all that orogeny means. We're actually trying to construct our own little cordillera over here. Uh, which if you don't know what that means, essentially actually the topography that we have right now is fairly standard for continental building. So if we take this mountain range right here, this guy, and we connect him to here, and then we also go this way and connect him to here, the general mountain building process that would happen right there is like, for example, on the west coast of the United States, we have like the Sierra Nevada Mountains. How those mountain ranges get created is because two large land masses tend to, it's either volcanic or B, two large land masses smack into each other and it just messes up the land and causes all kinds of crazy stuff. But most importantly, it gives you big, beautiful mountains. And we're shooting for big, beautiful mountains today. We're trying to shift the temperature downwards in our little world. And so I'm going to do my best to connect these. Now, you have all let me know in the comments that apparently rivers don't count unless they're on like a mountain. So this river right here is basically not a river at all. It's half the river that it used to be. So I'm just going to fill it in. We have plenty of river sources anyways. Who gives a shit? Uh, we'll go ahead. That's that's my general motto for like everything in life. We have too many rivers. Who gives a shit? Uh, that's how I conquer most things in life is just by being like, I don't give a shit. We have too many rivers. In addition, uh, this river over here is a bummer. So we're not going to mess around with that either. Uh, we need more river. So all that time we spent like building stuff over here, pretty much pointless. And I'm going to have to fill it in anyways. The good news is, is that you have all allowed me to lock in on the actual mechanic that functions here. So thank you for that. Let's drain away all of my HP doing some kind of weird godly vampiric shit channeling my power into the earth. And we'll fill this in. Once this is all nice and filled, uh, we'll make a river that's at the top of the mountain, basically. Uh, so it'll count. I guess if there's a river below sea level, it counts as a sea, and it doesn't count as a river. I haven't verified this information. This is this is just what I've read in the comments, okay? This is just what I figured out. But we're making the world much more acceptable to some of our creatures that live here. Uh, the building system is definitely meant for a controller. So unfortunately, there's no rapid way for me to do a lot of this stuff. It's all like I just have to mash it out by hand, unfortunately. Like with all these weird thin things we have sticking up, I have to do this by hand in order to get this all done because... Uh, there we go. Unfortunately, that's not a tool that I have. I have many tools. I am a tool. Some might argue that I am one. In fact, I'm sure there's somebody in the comments right there be like, Yeah, fucking tool. That's fine. That's cool. Whatever. It's all good. You're free to think about me what you will. Free to think about me what you will. But... Ugh, my tool kind of jumps in sizes right there. Unfortunately, we need to take this landmass upwards! Upwards and away! So let's continue building some mountains, shall we? Oh uh, yeah, that mountain looks okay to me. Now the big thing we want to do is we want to make this connect over here. Oh, I ran out of juice. I ran out of Jesus juice, so let's go ahead and we'll smoke it on Jesus juice. With my mountains on my money and my money on my mountains. Uh, uh, Lepto Tyranno's having a rough day. I don't think Lepto Tyranno's gonna make it, I'll be honest with you. Lepto, Ty Lepto Tyranno seems like he's struggling a little bit, even though we reduced his... We brought back the heat. Um, we started dropping the heat again so that he could exist. Uh, Packy Northus is apparently back. He has burst back onto the scene. Our ocean is suffering somewhat. Argiope has died. Colunia has died. Pikaia has died. William Zonia has died. We may have raised the temperature too much, but in so doing, we're going to get new stuff. So I think we can live with that, right? Uh, our dinosaurs are hurting too, but we were planning on like a major extinction event over here, so I don't think it's altogether that terrible that we're going to lose our dinosaurs. We still have like a thousand of them. We still have Triceratops running around in decent numbers. Uh, Brachiosaurus, probably not doing so hot right now. But that's because he's outside the Warmo Zone. They gotta come inside the Warmo Zone. If you come inside the Warmo Zone, in fact, moving said Warmo Zone to right here might help out a little bit. So that'll raise them back on up to 46 and give them a nice little habitat. Does it still get to the water? Still gets to the water mostly, so he'll probably move to where he wants to be. This should allow us to save a good number of our creatures because our temperatures are dropping. Uh, we've also got something new over here, which we'll want to take a look at. It's probably just some lame-ass plant or something, but it might be something cool. Uh, it's something down in this little ditch right here. What is this? Oh, it's a brachiopod. Okay, so we got ourselves a new seashell. That's a plus. Yay for seashells! Everybody loves seashells. Seashells from faraway beaches, as Aaron would put it. Uh, we've also got some kind of kitty thing that has grown up here. What's up, blue kitty? How you doing? He's actually got big old fangs on that kitty. That kitty is able to... Ah! A Smilodon that claims cold land as its territory. Let none run us from this land. A great and mighty land. Uh, you look kind of new. What are you? 
It's new butterflies, isn't it? It's always new butterflies. I always get butterflies. I don't know. Well, at least it's not a lame-ass plant. That's a plus. I mean, it could be something much worse. What is it? What is the thing? Is it flying above my head right now? It's flying above my head right now, ain't it? We're chasing fireflies or dragonflies through space at the moment. Cool, a dragonfly native to cool temperature rivers disappeared or appeared after Dryopithecus began propagating. Nice. Very cool stuff. I'm going to bring back a river over here because we need a river to run through these mountains and be a sexy river. Not a normal river, a river that is imbued with the power of sexiness. So let me drag my dumbass on up and over here, and we will find a river source in our little bag of godly tricks. We could do global cooling. I don't know how that's going to help out. We can lower and raise soil moisture. Valley source is not going to be altogether helpful right now. Instead, I'm going to put a river source right here. And so we've got an upland river source now. We're going to have this go in both directions. Maybe fill in a little patch right here. So we've got like a nice little pool on this side. That seems cool to me. A cool pool! And then on this side, we will go much smaller. And we will have a river run through this area for now. I'm going to have it widen once it hits this spot right here. And we'll just have that cut straight through the mountain. Perfecto. Even better. I like the way this is going. I don't know. This game's relaxing. Even if I cause a mass extinction event on accident, I don't feel that guilty about it. I could feel guilty about it, but I don't. <laughs> you know, I could feel guilty about it, but ah, uh, you know, I don't. <laughs> there we go. Give me my temperature back. Give me my temperature back here. This will also help out with some of the issues we're having with cooling. Just a little bit. And so we've got a nice little river right here. Maybe we'll have this blossom out into like a lagoon once it gets over to this side. Yeah, there you go. Not a lagoon. There are no beans involved in this situation. So take that, Shia LaBeouf. Uh, we will also drop that down right there. That'll take us down to, I think, sea level? Yeah, we're at sea level at that point. But that does give us some equitable river space to play around with. I mean, technically I could have it cut to the left right here too. But I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to. I do. I want it to. I'm going to go ahead and do it. And then I'll turn this into a cool, serene little pond. All of that's going to turn into ocean, so there's not going to be much I can do with that. But, you know, sea level, sea level, you got to do what you got to do. This should all count as lowland river, though. And so that's good. That'll give us some extra space to play around with. I move the heat stone, thinking our dinosaurs are going to have a rough time. Well, there we go. Uh, we've got some of our stuff back, so let me go ahead and slow the map down for a minute. Uh, we did have pretty much a mass extinction of dinosaurs. They're still around here and there, but mammals are starting to take over, as you can see from all the blinking pink dots that are all over our map. Uh, mammals are having a good time with the new temperature. They're liking it. And that's almost precisely what ended up happening. There was a big meteor impact. At least that's what the assumption is, given the evidence that we have geologically. Big meteor impact happened, lowered the global temperature hella hardcore, caused a mass die-off of rainforest land. When you do that, you deplete the oxygen, so larger creatures are naturally going to have an issue both with the temperature and the oxygen levels. You lower the oxygen levels, you're going to lose most bugs, because bugs are very, very sensitive to that kind of thing. Uh, you lower the temperature, you're going to lose anything that is massive and large that eats huge amount of rainforest land just to get its shit done. Uh, we got bell flowers over here, we've got what looks like some kind of toadstool plant, or maybe some kind of clover. A plant with large leaves that grows in cool wetlands. Okay, Morphomimus apparently likes that. Uh, with our little river space over here, what do we have going on? Oh, we got more of you guys too. Well, that cleared out a bunch of space, so plant life is happier with our new temperature as well. Dinosaurs, on the other hand, uh, they had to take one for the team. We also have a new Moomoo cow! Hooray for Moomoo cows! We've got further Moomoo cows so that we can have delicious steakums. Who doesn't love steakums? I love steakums. Steakums are delicious. But uh, yeah, all the dinosaurs that were living everywhere because our entire planetary temperature was like 100 degrees every single day, they're not going to make it. They're mostly just going to crowd around this little heat stone right here and hope that they don't fall outside of its radius. It's a little crowded over here right now, but they're going to have to learn to live with it, and if they don't, they're going to suffer. Uh, on this side, we've got a whole bunch of things that have adapted but have not really changed around too much. We will pick up a couple of stones, and let's just let life pass for a little bit and see what happens with our extinction event here, because this is going to be important to the way that I choose to kind of 
continue forward. Dinosaur numbers are going to drop, uh, but we should see new things pop in too as we start to have a more suitable temperature for everything that wants to exist here. Cyclomedusa made a bounce back. Mammothus is loving the new temperature, but dinosaurs, not so much. So after about a half a million years, the landscape has actually changed quite considerably. Uh, give or take a half a million years, things have changed around, so our dire wolves are back. Uh, that's important because Canis Dyrus is going to lead us to some other things. We also have access to a new plant, like a big fern-like thing that looks like it's growing some fruit on it or something. It's a blessed tree. Olive trees. Oh, we have olive trees. That's pretty cool. So pretty sweet. We've got olive trees around here. Uh, other things that have popped up is we've gotten our bears back. So our bears have returned now that the temperature is much more manageable. And then on top of that, we're going to have to find... Are you my new bug? Yes, I'm aware. This is your territory. Calm down. Mumu, you might not want to stand so close to the uh, Tyrannosaurus. That might be a terrible plan. That's life advice from Splat. Don't stand next to the Tyrannosaurus when you're constructed from delicious steak. It's a problem. Don't do it. Uh, we don't have... Well, it does look like we have something in here. I saw a pink arrow for just a second. Oh, we've got new dragonflies over here. So we've got a new brand of dragonfly critters. We've also got something new over here directly on this side. Probably a new bug swarm. Yeah, there it is. So we've apparently evolved like every version of dragonflies ever. So damp forest with overgrown trees. I don't know how many of those I have right now, but I can promise you I'm working on it. Now, what I want to do now is I think I'm going to drag in. We're going to start working on monkeys. I'm going to start working on monkeys here. So let me find the monkey that is most important to us for getting to humanity. We've got Ursus Spileus. Ursus Spileus will probably drag on over. We've also got Canis Dyrus doing its thing, and they're blowing up, so chances are this will all evolve on its own. In order to get to humans, we need Dryopithecus, which is actually thriving right now, so our chances of Dryopithecus doing something for us is great. What I'd like to see added to the game is if they could add, like, a... Uh, a find this creature button. So if you mouse over a creature on this menu and you hit the button, I'd like it if it pops you out of here, and then it would pop you out of here and it would drag you to the first instance of that creature that you can find. So we need monkeys. I don't know exactly where Dryopithecus is hanging out. That looks like Dryopithecus. Yay, we've got Dryopithecus here. Let's get some humans. I am going to cycle on over to here. Monkey, there's a wolf nearby. You should be careful about this. I will also urge the wolves forward in their growth just a little bit maybe I'll urge Mumus forward a little bit there we go and so Mumus are doing their thing and we should see some cool stuff happen here this alligator's got places to be apparently he's got to move he's getting the hell on out of there working on monkeys right now so let's see what happens working on working on monkeys too ah we've got Australopithecus okay that's good Australopithecus is going to be one of our ancestors, and so he should be over here somewhere. Australopithecus was kind of a, yeah, there he is right there. And as you can see, he's standing up. That's what makes him somewhat interesting versus other monkeys, is that for whatever reason, their spine started to evolve, and it was more comfortable for them to stand than to be on all fours. We've also got another little monkey down here. There we go. So we've got a Pantroglodytes. Cool. He's probably going to lead over to, I think this guy right here is going to lead over to Neanderthalus. Although Neanderthalus might be, I don't know, it's been a while since anthropology. It's been a while since my anthropology classes. Pretty sure everything came from Australopithecus over here. And so we'll want to focus on him if we want good things to happen. And you want people like you and I to exist so that we can destroy the entire world and invent the internet. Yay! Destroy the entire world, but we gave you internet. We're so awesome. Yay, humans. Ah, we have Homo erectus now. So let's go ahead and take a look at Homo erectus. Yes, I know, the name is funny. I know, but Homo erectus is actually kind of an interesting creature. Homo erectus has stuff to talk about because Homo erectus, we have evidence to suggest that Homo erectus still existed when we existed, Homo sapiens, uh, on a small island, actually. We found carbon dating that lines up where Australopithecus had actually been mostly outcompeted and ended up on a very small island. I forget where. And we found remains of theirs that are in the wrong time period. It seems like they existed for a while, so long as they could remain isolated from Homo erectus, which is an earlier version of what we are, which is this little dude right here doing his thing. I don't know if Neanderthalus is in this game, 
but there's also evidence that suggests Homo erectus, Neanderthalus, and Homo sapiens all existed kind of at the same time. Like, we coexisted together, it's just that we outcompeted them. We were smarter than them, faster than them, better than them, and so we tended to wipe out things. We're pretty good at surviving. Humanity is amazing when it comes down to like, eh, if it's gonna be us or them, humanity's pretty good at making sure it's gonna be them. It's one of those things that we're pretty solid at. We're pretty sexy at it. We're pretty good at it. We, we, make, we make a sport out of it, you know what I mean? Like, if somebody gotta go, it ain't gonna be us. I mean, unless that other person is also us, and then we're pretty good at making each other disappear, too. Let's hang out for a little bit and see what happens with our evolution here. Oh, we've got a Yeti? What? How do we have a Yeti? That's not a real thing. How do we have a... What? Hold on. How do we have a Yeti? That doesn't make sense to me. How do we have a Yeti? He's right there. We've got a Yeti. Well, now I've got to go look for the Yeti. I mean... We've got Bigfoot. I mean, why wouldn't we look for the Yeti? It's not on our new species list, though, so maybe it's one of those, like, special things they put in as kind of like a teehee. Like that crazy, like, godly lion thing that's got, like, an aura or whatever. Maybe it's one of those. Like, it just kind of... It's out here. But we gotta find it. I'm gonna find him, though. If he's anywhere, Yeti's gonna be up the mountain. I know it. Well, I can't find the Yeti. I'm looking around everywhere for him, but we're gonna have to wait till Yetis are more prevalent. Maybe that's the joke, because it says you have Yetis, and then you can't find him. That might be the humorous joke that they're getting after. Oh, we've got Mus Musculus back, who died off a while back. I mean, he evolved for a little while in our world, and then he kind of just didn't make it. Aw, oh, the Yeti went extinct. No! Why, Yeti, why? So after letting it run for a little while, we've actually had an explosion of mammalian life since we lowered the temperature. Uh, mammals are everywhere right now, popping up in new species. Uh, most important among them, if you enjoy the doggos, is we have Canis familiaris now, which is pretty cool stuff. I don't know how much you like doggos. I love doggos. I think doggos are great. And so we'll go ahead and capture him. Oh, that's Canis lupus. That's a different one. A gray wolf. Yeah, Canis dyrus and boss were propagating. Yep, there he is. And so on this side, we also have access to... What are you? Hylobates. Okay. Just another little monkey variant. And then on this side over here, you like that reverse? I killed that thing, right? Well, we probably have a new Moo Moo over here. Oh, no, we've got uh, some kind of little lizard thing over here that looks like all the other little colored lizard things, but, you know. Megalania. V. Olivaceus is what that is. Our Yetis died off, so unfortunately we don't have access to Yetis yet. But maybe someday. Maybe someday. Uh, this little lady sitting up here, eating herself a nice little hawk of meat, watching over as the Tyrannosaurus does his business. It's very impolite, by the way. I don't like it when people watch me do my business. I don't think I would like it if I had to watch somebody else do their business either, although that's a corner of the internet I've yet to go to. Oh, uh, we've got ourselves a new bear over here. We've also got ourselves, uh, there he is. C. Familiaris. We've got ourselves the uh, modern dog, the domesticated dog, lives in wide grassy plains. As Australopithecus multiplied, the species truly thrived once humans started domesticating them. And so I love my doggo. I assume you love your doggo. We've also got a uh, Panthera tigress over here. We've ended up getting a tiger, which is pretty sweet. Uh, doggos have burst to fruition, though. And so we can finally be happy if you enjoy having your furry friend sitting on the couch with you wagging his little stubby tail. My dog has a stubby tail because they took his tail off for some reason when he was born. I don't know why they do that, but... I'm like, don't you think if he's born with a tail, he should just, like, have a tail? Nope, apparently they lop the tails off for some reason. So my dog has a little stubby tail. Didn't know about that till I went to go pick him up. But it's still kind of adorable. I mean, his little stubble nubbin bouncing around being like, ha, 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 whenever he's happy. Then again, I'd like him with a tail a little bit better, I think, but I'm not going to tell him that because it's mean. It's something he had no control over. It's mean. He didn't get to choose that. Okay, so we let it run for a while. We're at about 9.5 million years right now. We got a couple more things to look at, but at this point, I think we're going to have to urge things forward. We got our elephants back, which is pretty sweet. I'm actually super happy about that because I do like elephants. Elephants are gorgeous, wonderful creatures, and it's an absolute travesty that the poor little bastards have just been hunted to ridiculous. We've also got hyenas. Not a fan of hyenas. Not a fan of hyenas. Don't like hyenas at all. It's because I, I saw them eat a lion kitten one time, and it just ruined hyenas for me forever. I'm like, but it's so adorable and little, and you're tearing it apart. Why? And I just, I've never been able to recover from that. I've never liked hyenas after that point, and I know I should not care. I know. I know that that's just nature, but it bothers me. What the shit is that? 
a foul-smelling flower of Rafflesia that blooms in cool, swampy forests along with Gerbera. Its smell lures insects such as Pentala flavescens. Okay. We've basically hit the end of our tree right now, and so I'm thinking if we want to move our way towards humanity, the best way to do that is to start messing around with uh, our dear friend over here, Homo erectus. I think uh, if we throw a little bit of something something Homo erectus' way, we'll probably end up with something kind of cool. I mean, on the plus side, we've already got, like, dinosaurs living alongside humanity. That in and of itself... Oh, they build little huts! Oh, shit! Oh, my God! I didn't realize they were gonna do that! That's super cool! That's really awesome. That's, like, one of those little touches that I truly and deeply did not expect to happen. And then maybe, I don't know, I'm gonna evolve doggos because maybe we'll get pit bulls out of it. Because my pit bull's adorable, and so... Evolve the doggo! Make him into a pibble! S. Magister? An ancient human have been birthed. Let's go find S. Magister, an ancient human. So that's probably him right there. He's running around looking a little bit more biblical than the rest of them. He's got like some nice woven clothing on. Very nice for you, man. Uh, that's the ancient human. Primates use speech and writing to form nations. They thrived as food, such as on food. I assume on food. I, I think we thrived as food. If we thrived as food, we wouldn't be here today. Came easier to secure lands. Look at that. Looking all biblical. Nice. She got her hair did. Looking all fancy. Good for you, lady. Good for you. I'm... What the hell was that noise? Is that a chicken? Do we have, do we have chickens now? Is that what's going to happen here today? I don't see a chicken back here. Chicken, where are you at? I heard a chicken. Oh, hey. What's up, little wormy newt creature? How you doing? You enjoying being a newt? Varenus olivic... I can't even say that. Adapted to desert habitat where cool winds blow. That's pretty sweet. I'll take that. Uh, it looks like we're rising through the earth right now, strangely enough. Let me see if I can get myself dug out of this situation. There we go. Every now and again, I get trapped beneath the earth. It is what it is. And so we've got a whole number of things right now, but we do have the spark of life, which we can give. Where's my spark of life? We can give that to humans and something good happens. I've been holding on to it like the entire game. The birth of the human race. So it has no effect unless used on a certain species. I'm going to assume, taking a look at my evolution chart here, that now that we've gotten to humans, it's probably on them. Probably on them. We'll try something a little bit less expensive first. So I'll drop like an evolution thing on them first. I mean, at this point, we're talking about culture development, though, more than anything else, in all honesty. Like, at this point, we're basically the same in modernity as people were 5,000 years ago. It's just technological advancement goes up. There's no, like, physiological differences, really, aside from the fact that we don't die from diseases because we have cool things like vaccinations. What is S. Magister? Was that the little... That's got to be the little... Ah, there's modern human. And so now in order to be awkward, in order to be accurate, modern human needs to murder everybody else. Like all the species need to become extinct now, and it just needs to sit on top of its mountaintop counting gold and being like, "Eh, worth it. Worth it." <laughs> so are modern humans going to have trouble developing or are they just going to take over? It looks like their numbers are jumping hard, but dinosaurs are taking a hit right now, which is a bummer. Oh, we've got Boss Taurus, and we've got Tetsudini. Okay. Couple new things popping in. I mean, there's still things we haven't discovered that are still doing their evolutionary stuff. After this, we'll probably hit the ocean. We also got something like Titicum over there. Triticum or something. I didn't see what it was. It's Triticum. Okay. Modern human just thriving right now. Absolutely exploding, along with ancient human alongside them. Let's go have a look at our creation, because I feel like we've done a good job. Oh my god, they're making castles and stuff. Modern humans, what are you doing right now? I'll be honest, the modern female human is kind of adorable. She seems like one of those things that would be on a backpack when you buy in like the Japanese part of town. It, it, it seems like it. What the hell is that? Oh, that's going to be like Rome. Okay, so they're making like Greece and Rome over here. That's pretty cool. I like how they build their own little cities and cultures and whatnot. And I assume these guys over here on the hill are still doing their thing. Yep, the Pict living out in the hills. 
Uh, we needed to find something over here, and I don't know what we were looking for, but we're looking for something. I think. So we've got wheat that's actually being cultivated. Okay. So that's the triticum. Yeah. So that's got edible seeds, and so that's probably humanity's doing right there that that's being cultivated. Uh, we haven't seen any bumblebees or anything just yet. I would like to see bumblebees. I don't see what I'm looking for over here, but I assume it's here somewhere. We still have those giant ancient spiders, too, which upsets me to no end. Oh, it's a little adorable mouse. Look at him. Peep, peep. Cool. So that's a desert mouse. Nice. Oh, my God. We have built castles, like, everywhere. Good Lord. Kind of took over this place, didn't we? Yikes. <laughs> that was... That was they're talking to each other in little uh, uh, voices and eating apples. Well, this is going to be the end of our episode. These are domesticated cattle that we have right here. My name is Splattercat. If you want to see more of this series, please let me know. This seems like a decent departure point. If you want more, though, be very vocal about it. If you like what I do here on the channel and you enjoy this series, check out the Patreon. It's a great place to support me for what I do here on the internet and make sure that I don't end up going anywhere. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I will see you all later. This is birthday. is the beginning. We've basically tapped this thing out. I'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.